Hey everyone, welcome to another video. We will be reviewing the Odin Project, specifically the Foundations course. The Odin Project is split into two sections, the Foundations course, then after that you'll choose one of two different paths, either JavaScript or Ruby on Rails. Both paths are great. I just completed the Foundations course and after this I'll be doing all the projects in the JavaScript path, as JavaScript seems to be the more popular path. However, both paths are great, you'll learn great skills and great things in both of them. The Owner Project is an open source bootcamp that takes you from zero programming knowledge all the way to a full stack web developer. At the end of the Odin Project, it'll teach you how to build a resume, a portfolio, how to interview, and eventually score a job. The Odin Project is focused on web development, so you'll learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and JavaScript frameworks like React. And then it'll also teach you some backend and server side things like MongoDB, Node.js, and Express. The Odin Project is completely free and just go at your own pace. So if you're in school or working right now, you can work it into your schedule however you like and do as much or as little as you need to. Overall, I would highly recommend the Odin Project if you're on the fence about whether to do it or are looking for a boot camp to do. The Odin Project is one of the best, if not the best out there. It's constantly updated. How the Odin Project works is it will refer you to resources online that teach you a topic and they'll have you do generally do an exercise that reinforces that topic and then it'll have you build a project. Um, the other project is project based so you'll be building a lot of projects it will test you to the limit and you'll become great at googling and using resources like Stack Overflow to overcome problems. So that's what makes the Odin project great is it simulates what being an actual developer looks like. So at the beginning of the Foundations course, it, the Odin Project has you set up your developer environment. If you're on Mac, you're already fine. That's an operating system you can use. If you're on Windows, however, it's going to have you set up a Linux-based environment, so be using Ubuntu. There's two ways you could do this. You can use a virtual machine, or you can dual boot. A virtual machine allows you to have Windows open, but then you essentially open up Linux within a virtual machine on your computer. You dual boot, you have to restart your computer and you can switch over to Linux. If your computer doesn't have the best hardware, dual booting is probably a better option as using a virtual machine requires you to have two operating systems open at the same time. So after you set up your operating system, it will have you set up a few things like Node.js and NPM, and it'll have you set up GitHub and Git. That's version control. It allows you to set up and maintain different versions of projects. Virtually all programming jobs out there use some form of Git and version control. So the fact that the Odin Project has you using it is extremely important. A lot of boot camps and other resources completely ignore that, or some only focus on that. The fact that you using it out of the gate is awesome, and I highly recommend the Odin Project just for that. If you're on Linux and you are struggling to use Git and GitHub, I actually have a video up here that goes over how to set it up on your Linux. It also has you set up your, your code editor. VS Code is probably the way to go. It's the one that it recommends. The one that I use, it's highly popular. It has a lot of different options and features and you'll be able to do everything that you want. It's also free. So after you set up your environment, it'll have you learn some HTML and CSS and then it has you build some projects. We're going to go over all the projects right now. We've completed all of them. Okay, so this is the foundation course. We have an introduction. It takes you through all these steps. Uh, set up your development environment. Get basics, HTML foundations. So this is the first section in which we have a project, which is called recipes. The, the purpose behind this project was to show you how to use basic HTML. So it allows you to link between different uh, HTML files. So we'll click on this one, it'll take us to this page, tacosoup.html, basic HTML elements like paragraph tags and ordered and unordered lists, and how to put an image in there, and how to use anchor tags. Pretty basic, but HTML is the skeleton and foundation of web pages on the internet, so this is a really good project to help you learn basics of that. Let me know down below in the comments what inspired you guys to get into programming and if you're doing the Odin project, what inspired you to do the Odin project? The next project was landing page. So the purpose of this project was to create a basic landing page that is split up between several different sections. So we have a header up here, 
These links don't do anything if you click on them, but if you wanted to, you could implement anchor tags like you did over here and have those linked to other pages as well. This section right here, you could just fill out with whatever information you wanted. Um, we did some really fun, cool things with uh, CSS and Flexbox and hover effects. So our page is pretty responsive. If you hover over these images, they'll affect the elements around them and grow. The image will resize as well. We did a really cool little gradient right here and another hover effect. So all in all, really fun project. There was no JavaScript in this section yet either, mostly CSS and HTML. The next project is rock, paper, scissors, which is to be played in the console. So hold control shift J, you can open up the console, press start game. It's going to prompt you for rock, paper, or scissors. Uh, there is validation. So if you type something incorrectly, you have to, you have to type it incorrectly. It won't accept blank answers or it won't allow you to cancel either. It, the goal is to play five times and see who wins between you and the computer out of five rounds. So we played five, we won three, computer won two, and we tied zero times. If you play a new game, we'll just go rock each time real quick. Uh, it'll keep track of the previous games as well. So our tally is now up to five, the computer's up to three, and we've had two ties. So all in all, also really fun. This was built mostly with JavaScript. There was very little HTML and CSS, as you can tell. This uh, page doesn't look the best, but they have us right here. Come back and revisit our rock, paper, scissors. So this wasn't a project, but it was an assignment to do. So we did that as well. This is what it looks like after we did it. And this is not to be played in the console anymore. Uh, the console doesn't have anything to do with this project. Once again, we do have a little hover effect and the computer also has a hover effect with what they chose. So. It just paper, you saw paper get bigger. And this game will play until somebody wins five times. So we've had two ties, we've got two, computer has one. It'll keep going until, looks like we won five times. And then play again, everything resets. So once again, we learned a lot more JavaScript methods with this, for loops, while loops, and how to interact with the DOM with JavaScript as well. So listening to uh, a click event in the HTML will send a function to run with the JavaScript. The next project was Etch-a-Sketch. So this one also used JavaScript to render most of the page and the JavaScript will change what colors we're using or how many squares there are on the sketch pad. And we also made it so you can switch between coloring and not coloring as well. It's, a, it's an additional feature that we added onto it. The HTML was essentially just used to create the structure of the page. So like setting up the title and this is where the sketch pad's going to be and these are the buttons. So this one used a lot more JavaScript and JavaScript methods to interact with the DOM or the user interface that we have here. The final project was Calculator. We used a uh, CSS framework called Tailwind CSS to make it look as good as it does. So again, there's hover effects, it looks really clean. Uh, however, there was a lot of JavaScript to uh, keep track of previous fu functions that we've ran and previous values that we've had, as well as listening to click events on the screen or if we type on the keyboard. We wanted to keep track of a lot of those. This was a relatively difficult project, but it teaches a lot of JavaScript methods and was quite useful in helping us further our understanding of JavaScript. That's the foundations course. Those are the projects that you'd be building in it. There's a lot of other assignments. Pretty much every one of these links and resources that it takes you to will generally have an assignment at the end of it as well. And you can see it, it points you to W3 schools or MDM or articles to learn all of these various topics. And we can see right here, it has a little assignment for us to do. So the Odin project is an extremely valuable resource and bootcamp, and you'll learn quite a bit in it. We'll be working on the JavaScript section next. If we look at that, I think it has a start off with intermediate HTML and CSS. There's only a couple projects in here, but there's quite a bit of, uh, of different assignments and everything. So I'll probably be doing more than just the two assignments in here. If there's a difficult assignment or a really cool assignment, I'll do a video on that as well. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought.